Now, a lot of parents enrol their kids into performing arts for fun or to keep them active. But dance and drama are also great for a child's brain development. We are joined on the Coffee Group today by drama coach Charlotte Nightingale and also neuroscience specialist Nathan Wallace. Good morning to you both. Good, Good morning. morning. Charlotte, Good morning. let's start with you. Um, in terms of social development, what, mm -hmm. do you, what do you see with kids? What's happening? Um, I'm always blown away about what impact it has, impact performing arts has on ch ch children's social development. I mean, I see it myself with my own children as well as the children I teach. Um, my son, for example, one of my sons has a disability and has global developmental delay and didn't speak till he was two um, and I swear it was the music therapy that he had that actually made him um, learn to speak just that idea of communicating through music mm -hmm. even though not having any speech so it's I think it's really amazing I mean also children growing confidence in performing arts classes it's all about that how, that music development, I mean, how yeah. does that actually work? Well, they say that um, music, I mean, you can probably help mm -hmm. me with this, yep. Nathan, but it uses both sides of the brain at the same yep. time. Um, and I think it's to do with that. I mean, and also music is a very calming mm. influence. You know, I mm. use it with my kids all the time to calm them yep. or to get them up and ready. And, you know, in the morning for school, you know, I put on some really cool music and get them going. So I think it really does help with using both sides of the brain mm. and sort of crossing over into both sides. Which is they really use it important. with um, stroke victims in the same way. That yes. someone language is predominantly on the left hand side of your brain. Mm -hmm. So you have a stroke on the left hand side of your brain and you lose language. The person can't speak. So what they can often do is still sing. Wow. So that uh, they can't s speak, but they can sing. That's extraordinary. So singing's more on the right brain. So they use the singing to link back into the talking mm. and get the talking back going on the left hand side. So what about with the, else with the dance and the drama? How mm -hmm. does that, what's the scientific explanation for how that all it works? It is sort of to do with left and right mm. brain. That We tend to think of the left brain as being the academic, um, what gets you good grades at school, mm. and we forget that the right brain supports all of that, that more intuitive, the more drama, mm. speech, it is half of your brain and it really supports like in New Zealand, we tend to think, no, do science and maths. Get rid of the waste of time, drama and arts and <laughs> yeah. stuff. That's really not proper academic subjects. Let's do science and maths. Um, do we then produce the top scientists and the top mathematicians in the world? No, we don't. The countries in the world that sort of pretend to produce the top mathematicians to get the most prizes and stuff, uh, I mean, you could argue who they are, but they tend to be Japan, Netherlands and Hungary tend to get their top awards for maths. What they have in, three radically different cultures, what they have in common is compulsory music education right the way through school. So by educating their right-hand brain with music, it actually strengthens their left-hand brain's ability to do things like maths and science. But people don't understand that. In New Zealand, we think specialise in maths right. and science and get they rid of it. They all work together very well. Yeah. Um, how else do they give cope, uh, children strategies to cope with work and things? Um, I think that in a drama space in particular, we're all about creating a safe and kind of nurturing environment a positive environment where everyone's ideas matter so we're not saying no that's wrong in the same way as you might do in school so I think that gives confidence it supports children and we often have kids who you know are anxious coming to our classes and it's about building them up so that they can use those skills so that they do go to school and put their hands up and have that kind of yep I can do this and what what I say is valued what I say matters mm. which is great I often say to people that's the single most valuable thing that I got from my education like I've followed the academic path, been a lecturer at university and did the quals and things. When I look back over my childhood and my education at school, I think the single most valuable thing that's helped me as an adult to be successful is the principle called yes let's that you have that you have to do <laughs> a in theatre sports. Game. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? In theater, you know, theatre sports, like whose line is it anyway? Yeah, yeah. they're always the great idea to watch. is you're not allowed to block an idea. Mm. So if you say, hey, let's all get naked and run around the park. I only can reply with yes, let's. You're not yes. allowed to block an idea. Although we probably wouldn't do that in a then school. I would say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I would say, yes, let's, and let's do it with raincoats on. Yeah, so yeah. that you can go, yes, let's, yeah. but you don't block any idea. Mm. And that trains your brain to be able to do far more than you thought you could, because mm. a lot of your brain, is your left frontal cortex is constantly blocking you. Right. And that untrains you to be blocked, and that yes, let's principle creates a flow mm. of creativity and a stream of consciousness that is... Amazing. That's it's fascinating it's too because, because you're right, quite often thing. we think things are, you know, oh, we can't do that or society won't let me do that. Mm -hmm. What about if kids are anxious or they don't want to go on the stage and do these sort of dramatic things, is it okay as a parent to push them a little bit? I mean, what do you do? I, I think it is, um, but I think it has to be the right environment. I think we have, uh, you, uh, commonly we find that the kids that really excel in the performing arts are those that struggle at school. Mm. Um, you know, if I think of my top um, students, they're the ones who've got learning difficulties or really struggle. Um, 
So, yeah, I think it's... Um, it's okay to give them a little bit of a nudge. Yeah, to give them a bit of a nudge, um, but to be in the right environment, to be positive. You, you don't know, want it to be to a be... scary experience. Yeah, exactly. And if someone doesn't want to go on stage, then let them watch. Let them sit to the side. Let yeah. them do something mm -hmm. else until they're ready to. You know, that's what do you think, Nathan? You have to support it, don't you? Yeah, I think you do. If you're going to push the child, I mean, I'm weary of pushing. I think parents push kids to do too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as long as they're supported. Mm -hmm. It's right. good to go outside your comfort zone. And you do that with support, you that's, that's that, extending yeah. their yeah, world, exactly. to put them into a place of fear. Well, I mean, the mm. analogy I would use is that if you wanted to go skydiving and you were a bit scared, would it be helpful if I pushed you out of the plane? <laughs> yeah. Or would Probably you rather not. wait until I supported you and encouraged you and to you wanted make to you do decide it on your own. when you wanted okay, to jump? Let's leave it right there because yeah. that's a great analogy to go out on. Thank you both so much for joining <laughs> us today. You. I don't forget sure to, to check out Nellie's All Natural Laundry Soda at nellies.co.nz.